Good morning. It's Friday, the 23rd of April, uh, 2021. We're at the Rector of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer according to the 1928 prayer book. It begins on page 6. We're here to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first of all, uh, let's seek the forgiveness of our sins. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Psalms for the 23rd day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 482. They are Psalms 110 through 113. Psalm 110 is one of the most frequently quoted Psalms in the New Testament. It's a messianic Psalm sets forth both Christ's deity uh, as David's Lord, his ascension to the Father's right hand, and his eternal priesthood. And it's a great psalm of the incarnation. And then Psalm 100, well, 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 we'll say something about each as we go through them. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the broad of thy power out of Zion, 
Be thou ruler even in the midst among thine enemies. In the day of thy power shall thy people offer themselves willingly with an holy worship. Thy young men come to thee as dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord upon thy right hand shall wound even kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies and smite and sunder the heads over divers countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up his head. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 111 speaks of the goodness of God in all his works. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, secretly among the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is worthy to be praised and had an honor and his righteousness endureth forever. The merciful and gracious Lord hath so done his marvelous works that they ought to be had in remembrance. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do thereafter. His praise endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 111 spoke of the goodness of God in all his works. The uh, Psalm 112 talks about the goodness of the godly, God-fearing man in all his works, in his likeness uh, to God. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, he hath great delight in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth, the generation of the faithful shall be blessed. Riches and plenteousness shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the godly there ariseth up light in the darkness. He is merciful, loving, and righteous. A good man is merciful and lendeth, and will guide his words with discretion. For he shall never be moved, and the righteous shall be had in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of any evil tidings, for his heart standeth fast and believeth in the Lord. His heart is established and will not shrink until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed abroad and given to the poor, and his righteousness remaineth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The ungodly shall see it, and it shall grieve him. He shall gnash, gnash with his teeth and consume away. The desire of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 113 majesty the most high God manifested in his mercy to those who are most low. Praise the Lord, ye servants. O praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. The Lord's name is praised from the rising up of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God that hath his dwelling so high and yet humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and earth. He taketh up the simple out of the dust, and lifteth the poor out of the mire, that he may set him with the princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, here beginneth the 18th verse of the 16th chapter of the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy. So at, uh, in this uh, central uh, passages in Deuteronomy where Moses is taking the children of Israel through a kind of expansion and application and interpretation of the Ten Commandments. And so here he touches on uh, the fifth commandment 
uh, honor thy father and thy mother, which has to do with uh, the authority, um, earthly delegated authority. And uh, here, uh, its application is to judges and to kings. Um, and he begins with judges, and one of the features he addresses has to do with the giving of bribes, a very customary, uh, known as gifts, a customary, uh, a custom in the ancient Near East is a way of sweetening the judge, um, but uh, uh, those who administer justice in the name of the, of the God who cannot be bribed, uh, who does not have favorites, um, who does not, uh, uh, does not profit from the offerings made to him, um, they likewise must be uh, untouched by those considerations. We take that for granted, but of course it's one of the legacies to us of biblical religion. After talking about that, he moves on to the question uh, of kings, and it's clear again the kings are not to be uh, uh, the standard issue of the ancient Near East. In between is a section on uh, uh, punishments for idolatry, and uh, while it has some uh, reference to judicial procedure, uh, namely the question of witnesses um, the, uh, uh, on capital cases, it's a reminder to us that all the commandments in the end are uh, reflections on our fundamental loyalty uh, to the one true God. So 1618 in Deuteronomy. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, which means uh, showing partiality. Uh, neither take a gift, a bribe. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And then he moves to the question of idolatry. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set up any image, which the Lord thy God hateth. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any ill favored, evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people. So thou shalt put the evil away from among you. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, between plea and plea, between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee, the right hand or nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, <coughs> excuse me, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do more, do no more presumptuously. 
So requirements here of, of uh, not of uh, mob justice, but of a legal process that involves careful inquiry, reference to higher authorities where necessary, and uh, the agreement of two or three witnesses uh, on any capital offense. At the same time, a kind of rigorous need to make sure that the nation's uh, uh, justice is preserved, uh, the wicked must be put away. And now the question of the kingship, verse 14. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, a foreigner, which is not thy brother. And he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, he shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away into idolatry, right? Um, Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn out aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Here endeth the lesson. So the, the king is not to rely on military power, or diplomatic alliances, or wealth, uh, or um, he's not to be morally indifferent. He is to be instructed and obedient in the law of God. He is to be God's own man, uh, a man of uh, 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 that is an instrument indeed of God's own eternal kingdom. And uh, that speaks to us, of course, uh, it anticipates David, uh, but of course it's supremely fulfilled in David's, uh, David's great son uh, and Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church Throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, an adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Uh, here beginneth the 25th verse of the 12th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. So um, we've got a a new uh, church in Antioch. We've got an um, a, a opening of some kind to the Gentiles. Uh, the Spirit moves in, in the church in Antioch to, for a mission uh, that is to go out into um, the cities of uh, first Cyprus and then Asia 
and we're going to hear about uh, Paul's first sermon that, uh, that uh, Acts records uh, in the synagogue of um, Antioch and Pisidia. It's a sermon both to Jews and to God-fearing Gentiles. Uh, and, um, well, we'll see what happens. Verse 25, chapter 12. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. Remember, they'd been taking relief from Antioch to Jerusalem. And took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, the Black, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. And now we're going to skip the brief episode in uh, Cyprus and take it up at verse 13. All right. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos in Cyprus, they came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John, this is Mark, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers, and exalted the people when they, they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. At about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul the son of Kis, or, or Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. So he's rehearsed Israel's history. Uh, he's now announced the fulfillment of Israel's hope has appeared. And now he moves in, of course, to the core proclamation of the gospel. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, good news, the gospel, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Uh, and that's a quotation from Isaiah. 
55. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Psalm 16, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Now Paul moves to the conclusion of his sermon, which so far has tracked very closely to the sermons of Peter. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and now the very distinctive Pauline uh, element, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. That's a pretty controversial statement, as we'll see. And so Paul follows up. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, you despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. That's from Habakkuk. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, uh, Gentiles, followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Here endeth the first lesson. So uh, we'll probably not be reading this online, but you can read the rest of the chapter in due course, perhaps over the weekend, and you'll see that a good deal of controversy is aroused over Paul's sermon. And, you know, that's kind of odd because... Uh, it, it's really, as I said, tracks very closely uh, to the message that Peter had delivered in his sermons in Jerusalem to an all-Jewish audience. Here, to a mixed audience of Jews and Gentiles, we'll see that Paul has said something that, uh, after the initial positive reaction from Jews and Gentiles, finds a lot more, uh, uh, gets the Gentiles very positively excited and puts a lot of Jewish backs up. And it's it's right there in that, that little Pauline verse with which I, the sermon more or less ends, verse 39, uh, this question of justification uh, um, by faith in alone in Jesus rather than by the works of the law. And that's, uh, of course, something that uh, was extremely good news to the Gentiles, uh, the idea they could become part of God's people and share in the blessings of salvation without circumcision, without the purity laws. Uh, that was a matter of some annoyance uh, to the Jews. And so we'll see this uh, a division starting to open up uh, in which the Gentiles are more attracted by the good news of the gospel than uh, the, the Jesus' own people are. So we'll follow that theme uh, through um, in future readings. But we give thanks indeed um, that we are justified by him uh, in, uh, from all things from which we could not be justified by doing the works of the law. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the confession of one faith, the faith of one baptism, one Lord, one God and Father of us all, let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God to his watchful care. I bid your prayers for the church and its unity in the truth of the gospel, for our country and its peace, order, and good government, for our clergy and people, for their faithfulness in witness and worship, for all those who suffer in mind, body, or state. We pause to cause to mind, call to mind those for whom we especially want to pray, for those battling serious disease, for those recovering from surgery, uh, for those anticipating surgery, for those who are grieving, for patience and a happy outcome from all those afflictions. And we remember before God those who've departed this life in Christ and are at rest, that we with them may rise to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee and do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only, that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who hast given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that is an estimable benefit. And also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. That the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, so our verse to remember and think about today, perhaps uh, the conclusion of Paul's first missionary sermon, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man Jesus is proclaimed unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified, um, acquitted, from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. 
Let us not indeed be despisers of this free grace by which we are justified before God through faith in Jesus. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen.